said I was going to film day two. And we've been so damn busy. I haven't done it yet. So we're finally getting caught up here. For the last two days, sprayed about 1,200 acres over the course of the last two days since I filmed. And uh, yeah, it's just way too busy to focus on taking any sort of video. I just needed to focus on spraying. Ah yes, you again. I'm not sitting in you for 11 hours again today. That was way too long yesterday. I pointed out in my intro how exhausted I looked. Exhaustion is one of the biggest enemies an egg pilot faces. When there's a pest outbreak like right now, there's caterpillars and worms eating soybeans, we'll spray from sunup to sundown because there's so many acres to spray. And the longer these insects feed, the more damage is done to the crop. So we had been spraying nonstop for about four days straight. And as you can see, it's taking a toll on me. It's not just the long hours that wear on a guy though. The task we're performing is mentally exhausting. When we're on the deck spraying, there's so much going on from spotting obstacles, avoiding them, making a good application, turning safely while trying to be efficient, watching for other aircraft, and just flying the airplane. In aviation, we call this task saturation. And as a young pilot, it wears on me more than a seasoned ag pilot. So as a young pilot that is more susceptible to exhaustion, it's important I identify when I'm too tired to fly and pull myself out of the airplane. I know I'm getting tired when I stop scanning my engine instruments. Typically I scan my engine gauges once I'm cleared of my obstacle and turning back to the field. I catch myself after about six turns of not looking and say it's time to stop. Or my turns will start getting wider for no apparent reason. This happens once I'm clear of the field and obstacles. My mind takes a break because I feel safe there and don't have to focus on avoiding something. At that point it's time to take a nap. Everyone thinks our job is dangerous, and it is, but it's only as dangerous as the pilot makes it. If someone decides to fly half asleep, the risk factor goes straight to 10. This first field might not be too exciting because there isn't anything around it, but for me it was a great opportunity to work on making more efficient turns. Turning is a lot more complicated than you might think. Quick efficient turning means more time spraying, which means more acres done in a day, and that means happy customers. But turning quickly comes with more risk. When we pull out of the field, we're trading speed for altitude. When turning, we increase the load on the airplane, thus decreasing our speed even further. So basically, pulling out of the field and turning around costs speed and energy. As turns get tighter, more speed and energy is given up. If an airplane runs out of speed, it will stall and fall to the ground. So there's a line that can be crossed easily when trying to turn quickly. Knowing the airplane and its limits, along with my own personal limitations, is crucial to learning how to do this safely. I myself may not yet have the stick and rudder skills or finesse that an older pilot does. Along with knowing the airplane, it's important to listen to what it's saying. So you hear a beep at the top of my turn, that's the stall warning horn going off. 
That tells me a stall is imminent, and if I push it further, the airplane will stall. If I keep pushing it past the horn, the aircraft will begin to shake or buffet. When the airplane begins to buffet, you are on the edge, and any further increase in load on the plane will result in a stall. In this plane, you'll feel the tail buffet first, so not only does the plane shake, but the stick will be rattling in your hand. At this point, I push forward slightly to decrease the load and prevent the stall. You can see I'm getting about a half to three quarter mile away from the field. At the beginning of the season, I was in between a mile, mile and a half. So I was way out there and I'd say a half to three quarter mile is a good improvement. A lot of my mentors who are flying bigger airplanes use between about a quarter to three quarter of a mile, typically depending on the size of the airplane. When I go into my new bigger airplane, I'm gonna start this process all over again and I might start next season being a mile, mile and a half away from the field and I'm going to have to work towards decreasing my turn radius safely. On top of turning safely, I'm also trying to time things right so I end up on my line when rolling out of the turn. I have a GPS on board that draws lines across the field for me to follow and if I fly straight down all those lines there will be no skips in my coverage. There's a light bar on the nose that tells me how far right or left of the line I am. If all three dots are lined up in the center, I'm within a foot of the line. And no, there is no auto steer or autopilot. We get that question all the time, and it's a legit question. We have to fly the airplane at all times. So you'll see me chasing the line a few times because I didn't time things right. These fields were really fun. Again, no major obstacles around them, but a road between them. So there's both my fields. They're a little offset, but almost two-thirds of them overlap, so for efficiency's sake I tied them together. This saved me about 30 turns or so. This meant I had to hop the road, so I turned my spray off about 150 feet from the field edge, so the spray didn't get on any cars. Then I turned back on 150 feet into the other field. I'm about 30 feet in the air right here, but I'm sure they'll say I almost came through the window. Now, if there had been a wire running down the road, I would not have done this. I did, however, have this little half-mile leg to fly where the fields didn't line up, but I didn't think that was enough wasted time to justify spraying them separately. That about does it for this sake pilot vlog. I wish I could have done more talking on camera instead of doing voiceover, but that's just how this one worked out. Uh, like I said in the beginning, I was really tired, and I just needed to focus on flying my airplane and trying to improve myself so, so that's just how this one worked this also is all the footage I have from the season so unfortunately there won't be any more flying video until the spring however I am taking a turbine transition course this winter in Kansas this training will prepare me for the turbine air tractor 402 I'll be flying in 2020 it consists of three days flying an air tractor simulator with an instructor alongside I don't know if they'll let me film anything, but if they do, I'll hopefully make some vlogs about my time there. Um, there's going to be a lot of interesting things that I'll be doing in that simulator, like learning how to not hot start a turbine engine, um, dealing with different emergency situations, identifying um, engine trouble, things along those lines. Um, I think it's going to be a really, really good um, experience and an eye-opener to how we need to prepare ourselves for these situations and train so when the when these emergencies do emerge we have our training to fall back on. If you've made it this far thank you so much for watching. Um, if you have any critiques, if uh, there's things you'd like to see please leave them in the comments section. Um, if you have any questions leave them in the comments as well. If you want to see more egg pile vlogs, make sure to subscribe and I'll see you next time.